Good morning, everyone. <clears throat> Today, I'm going to discuss about uh, serverless application. So if you don't know me, I am Atikur Rahman, an AWS Certified Solutions Architect. I love to teach people on AWS, DevOps, Linux, <clears throat> and programming. So if you haven't subscribed to my channel, please, I would request you to subscribe my channel, and then you will always get notified when I upload a new video on AWS, Linux, or any any other tips so i have more than 10 years of work experience and i will share all my uh, personal uh, experiences what i have gathered so far and will give us as a tutorial so that you can learn this from your uh, home or from your smartphone while sitting or doing anything and then you learn those things rather than experimenting by yourself okay so uh, that's that let's discuss about serverless application so uh, what is actually serverless application so we know that every web application from customer portal to e-commerce it requires a server to run so why do we call it a serverless application so serverless application in terms of um, saying it's a uh, buzzword i would say but in general, serverless applications means server management less application. So it is not without a server because you always need a server to run your application. There is always a server is there, whether it's e-commerce application or a mobile app or your web application or your website or blog, anything, you need a server, that's sure. But serverless means server management less. So you don't need to manage your server. You don't need to take the headache to manage the server so this headache part you are shifting it to AWS or GCP or Azure so they are managing your server and then you do what you like to do best is build up your application to the coding do the things that you love and keep the server management headache to AWS so that's it that is what we say serverless is actually doesn't mean server uh, less but it means server management less then um, why we need server manage serverless for a couple of reasons we want to avoid management of servers so what are those reasons first of all it is expensive and inefficient to have a full-time server administrator for a small application maybe you are just starting up you are a startup application you are a startup company and you just have a dream and you start want to have build up your application and then you suddenly see that you need to have a server administrator to manage your server set up everything and then monitor over there that is way way costly for a startup or even a small organization let's let's say i have a organization of five or six developers who are building applications doing the magical things but then i have to keep one uh, server administrator who is uh, just working for one or two hours per day so it is uh, expensive and inefficient then server security is a big concern <clears throat> so let's assume that you don't want to have server administrator and uh, then you need to manage your server by yourself and you will try to experiment things try to do things and then you will obviously do something harmful your security is exposed to anyone and these these are uh, major issues <clears throat> for startups and inexperienced peoples if they are managing their server it is not for inexperienced let's say you have a server administrator but still they can have a they can have sometimes open your port 20 to anyone so they can uh, maybe use some um, back doors keep a back doors open for your server so then your server is exposed to the hackers your server is exposed to the malwares your server is exposed to the viruses all those things security risks so um, if you manage your server there is always a risk of servers security unless you have a strong team for server administrator small team strong team for cyber security so then your server security is always can be exposed then uh, next part is making changes and moving to life is a tedious process so let's say you have a startup and it's growing fast 
every day you are building something you are excited you want to change the world and then you see that if you wanted to make something move to production it works fine in the local it works fine in the development but when you are trying to move the production you need to shut down the production or you need to uh, there's some issues arises on production so there's always a chance that when you are planning to move things on life it becomes a tedious process and sometimes your server becomes down another issue that um, AWS or even everywhere they, they build per month or per hour whether you use, use it or not for example I use I uh, created EC2 instance at the moment they create the instance it's start billing it is start generating my invoices so whether I use it or not let's say I have created a development server it is running for 24 7 but my development team works only for 40 hours a week so <clears throat> the other parts other times it's still not used and they are still built so this is the problem with traditional server management where you have to pay the monthly bill or the hourly bill the next issue is scale up or down is a manual process and creates a downtime so you have a startup and it's growing fast it's really changing the world and thousands of people are just coming to your web application or, uh, or your e-commerce site then you suddenly see that your server goes down and then um, what you have to do is you need to manually change the server the capacity <clears throat> and move from one capacity to another one so in this process <clears throat> your server becomes down and then you have a um, manual process and then suddenly your advertisement or campaign is stopped and then suddenly you see there is very low traffic but still you have a huge capacity in the server so this is an issue scaling up or down is manual and creates a downtime so um, this is this is an issue for, for very um, highly available applications that you cannot have a downtime I just want to scale down automatically or scale up automatically okay so next we are going to discuss the benefits of serverless applications to avoid these issues serverless concept arised using serverless technologies we can remove the burden of server management so our application is always up no matter what happens we don't need to worry about the security of the underlying infrastructure because AWS is managing this so you don't need to worry about viruses malware etc from the infrastructure but um, if your code is buggy that's different but from the underlying infrastructure it's secured you don't need to worry about this they are managed by AWS it's easy to scale up and down <clears throat> and scale down and no downtime is realized so for example if you're using a lambda functions it you don't feel anything it's always up if you're using ns3 it is always up there is no downtime for scaling up or down if you add more files it doesn't makes things down there is more visitors it automatically scales up same for the api gateway and uh, other things as well easy to deploy with minimum effort and compared to running a full-fledged server it's very easy to deploy say I have an s3 bucket and I just drag a file over there and it's there there is no downtime there is no issues so uh, deploying to the serverless applications is very easy smooth and it doesn't make your application down <coughs> so um, serverless items are built another issue is the normal server is that they are built on hour or month whereas serverless items are built per execution it's not per hour per month but it's execution for example lambda is built per execution not like I have put files and they are billing no the number of executions that you uh, occur on lambda the number of times you call this lambda they are built on that particular cost not like full time same for s3 if you are just uh, using s3 and then uh, if you have request visitors coming then you will be charged if there is no visitors coming there is no charge 
So this is the major benefit that you will be built only per execution, not per month or per hour. And uh, on the other hand, for the normal servers, you have to pay whether you use it or not. Like you have a dev server for the team who's working for 40 hours, but you are paying for the whole week. That's, that's one third of the users and two thirds is wasted. So uh, these are the benefits of using serverless applications. So we discussed about benefits now we discuss about drawbacks so what does what are the drawbacks it is great but can we use it for everything serverless I mean server is great it's cool but can we use it for everything no we cannot use it for everything it has some limitations as well a couple of limitations are like less control over server parameters that you, you have less control and it has a, a time limit for running these applications that you cannot run unlimitedly. For example, a Lambda can run maximum five to 10 minutes and it doesn't support some frameworks as well, like coding it or a lot of it. So these are the drawbacks we should know, but it's a growing technology and in coming days, these drawbacks will be removed. And I eventually, I think, more and more people will be using serverless technologies to build applications and normal servers will absolute but it's uh, i think five or ten years later not now okay then we have the tools that are used for serverless so we discussed about serverless the benefits it's cool it's new it's awesome but what are the tools for serverless so first uh, tools in aws for serverless is lambda so lambda is a uh, you can lambda is a kind of where kind of place where you can execute or run your code for python java c sharp node js ruby so any language of code you can run it gives you an uh, kind of an interface which supports maximum one gigabytes of RAM and it needs to be finished within five to ten minutes these settings is increasing time to time probably in coming days it may be 15 minutes also supported so Lambda is a serverless. Then RDS, RDS is also serverless database provider for MySQL, Postgres, Microsoft SQL Server, Oracle, etc. So you can run your database server in RDS. That means the underlying database server management is managed by AWS and you just put your database application over there. So that's RDS, SQS. SQS is also a serverless queue management system. So uh, you have, if you wanted to manage any queues, you can use SQS. It's serverless and it is highly available. I must say it's highly available. So for example, you want to save 5,000 emails to your clients, then you want to use a queue, right? You want to queue and one by one process, then you can use SQS. It works perfect. I must say it works perfect and you can use it for your production environment. You can use it for your highly available environment. So SQS is one of the most oldest things in AWS and you can use it and it's serverless. Then CloudWatch. CloudWatch is the AWS serverless monitoring tool. So what are the alternatives you have? You can use Nagios. You can use Grafana but CloudWatch is the serverless monitoring tool in AWS and it's very, very user friendly. It provides very useful graphs, data, and you can also monitor custom metrics from your on-premise instances, also in your EC2 instances. Okay. Then uh, other serverless tools are ELB that is uh, application load balancer by elastic load balancer now it calls application load balancer it is serverless load balancer and you don't need to have a serverless previously if you have to want to have a load balancer you want to use like HA proxy or something like this but now it's completely serverless using ELB and it is highly available Elastic Cache, this is also serverless in memory database provider like Redis or Memcache. Then you have DynamoDB, there is also serverless NoSQL database provider. If you have used MongoDB as a NoSQL database provider, then you know that 
you, you need to have a server for managing this. So you can use DynamoDB. It is a serverless. The whole infrastructure is managed by AWS. You just use it for your application. Code commit. Code commit is also a serverless Git repository management system. So you can use it to keep your all the codes in code commit, all the repositories, and it smoothly runs. You don't need to manage any servers over there. QuickSight. QuickSight is a serverless business intelligence app system. Uh, so you can create graphs based on your uh, different kind of data. Data can be your local database, can be CSV, can be Excel sheet, anything. And then you import it into QuickSight and then you create a nice graph out of it. And it's completely serverless. You don't need to use any kind of servers. AWS is managing this. You just pay the bills on a per execution basis or per dashboard basis. So considering the limitations where we can use it, we can run it for microservices. Serverless is very useful for microservices, the services which doesn't require huge memory and CPU power and ends within five minutes. Couple of examples which we have used so far is mentioned below. Um, currency converter API. So we build a currency converter API using AWS serverless infrastructure and it's completely serverless. There is no server used for building up this whole API system. It uses uh, AWS API gateway, Lambda, S3, and uh, it generates the whole application over there. So um, for example, you have, um, we have used S3 for storing those files. We have used Lambda for making those API calls and calculating those currency rates. We use DynamoDB for storing those data. And we use API gateway to API calls. Synchronize hundreds of thousands of images to portal with minimum effort on web server. Uh, we have built some applications which we can use to, um, in our internal applications, we use Lambda to uh, resize images from S3 and put it in a separate bucket. So this is one example. We also use Lambda to um, synchronize images from S3 to a uh, database system. Uh, this is one example where we have used um, a currency API and then in internally in one of our project we have used CloudWatch to trigger the Lambda function. So the whole structure is CloudWatch first triggers the Lambda functions and then the Lambda function takes the currency from the API. It's the Google currency API or third party API and then keeps in our database. And then we have uh, in our front end, we have a S3 bucket where we have all those things in an HTML file. Then it is loaded using CloudFront, API Gateway. Using API Gateway, we are calling the Lambda functions to get this data for the DynamoDB. Okay, so there is another example where we have used um, serverless technologies user uploads images to S3 and then it triggers the Lambda function and then it automatically updates the image um, information into a database. So this is also a serverless example where we have used serverless tools over there. Okay, to wrap up the conversation, I would say serverless is a new concept. It has started not long so far and it has some limitations. Despite the limitations, it is very essential tool for executing small taxes efficiently and effectively. We are planning to integrate more and more serverless tools into our different projects in coming days. And I hope gradually in coming days, people will use less of servers and more with uh, serverless. So that's it for today. And uh, I hope you all enjoyed this uh, lesson. If you like this video, please click the subscribe button, share it with your friends, and then enjoy the enjoy the videos of my others. Thank you. Have a nice day. Bye.